hello and welcome to this edition of Cronkite Sports Live. I'm Emmy Keenan. Beside me, I have Alex Gall. Alex, we have a big show. What's going on? We got tons of things going on in the world of ASU athletics. We'll start with some breaking news, though, from Arizona State football. According to the Arizona Republic's Jeff Metcalf, ASU starting quarterback Jaden Daniels will be a game time decision for tomorrow's game against USC. And that's some big news, Emmy. That is big news. And staying on the topic of football, the 5 and 3 Arizona State football team will face off against USC tomorrow here in Tempe. Our jo Jack Lottere has more on some takeaways from head coach Herm Edwards' press conference. And as the Sun Devils welcome the Trojans into Sun Devils Stadium this weekend, they will also be welcoming in an Arizona native back to the Valley. Here's Spencer Chihawk with a look at, eight, with, with a look at USC quarterback Keaton Slovis. At 5-4, USC is all but out of contention to be the Pac-12's first college football playoff representative. But there are two schools in the conference with a chance to make it to the top four. Our Dominic Stern has the latest on the CFP rankings in this week's impact. Be the tradition. That's the motto around great powers in the Sun Devil men's hockey program. Last weekend, ASU lived up to that motto, pouring on the offense and scoring nine goals in a two-game sweep of then number nine Quinnipiac, their first sweep of a top 10 team in the program's young history. Our Michael Quaid has you covered with the recap. It wasn't too long ago that the ASU men's hockey team took a trip to China. It represented new ground for the program, and it was a great tune-up for the regular season. But now another team has made the trip across the ocean. And of course, that's Bobby Hurley and the Arizona State men's basketball team. The team has been in China throughout the week preparing for their first game of the 2019-20 regular season, a non-conference clash against Pac-12 foe Colorado in Shanghai. ASU returns four key contributors from last season in Kamani Lawrence, Rob Edwards, Romello White, and Remy Martin. With some new speedy additions in the backcourt, it's quite possible the Sun Devils could return to the guard you glory of just two seasons ago. You can catch the game tonight on ESPN2 at 8.30 p.m. Arizona time. Now we'll move things over to the ASU women's basketball team, which opened their season on Tuesday with a big victory over Air Force. We now bring in Gabby Ducharme to break that one down. Gabby, this is a young squad that's led by freshmen and sophomores. What was their impact in the first game? Yeah, Alex, you talk about those freshmen. Sarah Bichetti really led things off for this team. She scored 12 points off the bench at that point guard position, came out firing on L cylinders from behind that arc. And then Ebony Walker and Sydney Caldwell came off the bench and absolutely nailed it. They scored 13 points combined in that second half. A really great outing by all three freshmen, and they're proving to be a force to be reckoned with, not only in the Pac-12 conference, but around the country. Yeah, and Gabby, ASU got seven steals in the second half of that Air Force game. What were your takeaways on their defensive effort? Yeah, their defensive effort was nothing but perfection in the second half. Charlie Turner Thorne did come out and say that they wanted to play fast and that they wanted their defense to fuel their offense. That's exactly what happened, Alex, as they really did get out on the break. They forced Air Force to make really silly mistakes. Kiara Russell, Sydney Caldwell really leading the way on that defensive effort for the Sun Devils in the second half, which allowed them to crack open that game and have a huge victory. And Gabby, ASU faces Army on Sunday. What can we expect in that game and going forward for this team? What we can really expect is a team that is going to allow their defense to fuel their offense. Charlie Turner Thorne talked about it after the game that they really want to be a confident team that allows themselves to wear their opponents down. They want to get out on the break, they want to run fast, and they want to allow their defense to handle all of that. Not only against Air Force did they do that tonight, but they will do it on Sunday against Army, and you can expect them to continue doing that because they are a smaller lineup against Pac-12 teams come January and February. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us here on Cronkite Sports Live, Gabby. And for more of her content, you can go to CronkiteSports.com. This weekend, the fourth-ranked ASU wrestling team begins their season with two top-20 duels against Purdue and Virginia. Redshirt sophomore Cade Belshay knows team expectations are high and for championship caliber and is ready for the whole squad to wrestle hard. Beside the accolades, I just want everyone to wrestle to their fullest potential. You know, I want them to work hard, not to leave the mat with anything, with any regrets or any what ifs. The Sun Devils return to Tempe next weekend with matches on Friday evening and Saturday morning at Desert Financial Arena. And now, Emmy, it's time for the way it is. You know how it works. We ask each other a couple questions, and the winner gets to rant. So, starting off with ASU football, they welcome in USC this weekend. What is more important for the Sun Devils? A return to form for their offense? or a more disciplined defense? Well, Alex, 
I can't say which is which, but let's just talk about that team's mentality. We talked about it last week. Even Herm has said the same. I don't think they're going to have that winning mindset until they put it in their heads. It's not going to happen until then. Yeah, I think it's definitely important for their offense to get going, Emmy, on Saturday. Jaden Daniels is a game-time decision we mentioned at the top of the show. If he is in the lineup for the Sun Devils, I think they get it done. All right, awesome. Next question, ASU women's basketball put up a whopping 22 fast break points against Air Force. Over under 20 fast break points on Sunday against Army? I mean, this team is so fast, and I really want to say over 20. I think they're going to get really close to it. I think they got about 18 or 19, but they don't break 20. I got to disagree with you. This team is on fire. Just by one game, you can tell. And I think they're in that beginning of the season mindset. It's just about how they keep that going, that momentum. So I'm going to say over. Yeah, and I mean, Territorial Cup time moving to soccer in Tucson tonight. How many goals does ASU women's soccer score, and do they pick up their first Pac-12 victory? Well, I mean, Alex, will they score any? It's 0-8 in conference play, and this whole pressure of the Territorial Cup is just going to add on to that. I don't they're not going to win. They're not going to get this. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago that we were talking about this team winning six or seven in Pac-12 and going to the NCAA tournament. I don't think it's going to happen either. I mean, I think they lose 2-0. All right, awesome. So who's going to win? That's the real question. <laughs> now our producers, Alex and Troy, in the studio, they have to pick the reader and who gets to rant after this see, fantastic who, who edition of the way it, it is, it? right? <laughs> Okay. Uh, there we go. There we go. Two in a row. The word of the day is speed. But what does that word actually mean? Well, it depends on the context. Usain Bolt is definitely speed on the track. Michael Phelps is definitely speed in the pool. But what is speed on a basketball court? And how do we quantify it? Obviously, we can measure 40 times in time from baseline to baseline. But on a team level, the best way to measure speed at which a team wants to play is through fast break points. The more fast break points, the faster the team's style. You see, there's something peculiar about Arizona State women's basketball this season, and that is their speed. Last season, Arizona State was a team that would grind you out in the half court, but head coach Charlie Turner Thorne is the first person to admit that her team lacked the speed to run teams off the floor on the break. ASU averaged just 6.5 fast break points per game last season and often had trouble closing gaps when trailing late in games. But it was abundantly clear in their season opening win over Air Force that this trend is quickly reversing. ASU blitzed the Falcons with 22 fast break points. And to put that into perspective, the Devils scored a total of 21 fast break points in their five postseason matchups last season. With the addition of speedy point guard Sarah Bachetti and front court transfer Jatavia Tapley, it's obvious Arizona State women's basketball has speed this season, and they aren't afraid to use it. And that's the way it is. All right, awesome. Let's go into top plays. Alex, let's see what they have for us today. Number three, we are looking at ASU women's basketball still on there. We see Kiara Russell. She's getting the ball and she's heading down court. She's going to put the shot in for the Devils on their season opener. Yeah, I mean, that's just we were talking about that speed from ASU women's basketball. But now to the ice, it's Johnny Walker in a win against Quinnipiac. He stole the show. Look at it on the screen right there in the air and into the net. All right, and number one, we are sticking to hockey. If you look at Logan Genuine, the freshman forward, he's going to hit the goal in the back of the net. That's going to be from an assist, a sweep pass from Austin Lemieux. His second goal of the night, if you just check it out right there. Oh, my goodness, it's insane. What a goal right what there. What a goal. What a goal. And a sweep for ASU and a sweep for us, I think, here uh, today. For us, a great, yeah. <laughs> great show for Cronkite Sports Live. And thank you again for turning into this edition of Cronkite Sports Live. For our entire crew, our producers, Alex Hook and Troy Tauncher, and for Emmy Keenan, I'm Alex Gall. Thank you for the privilege of your time, and have a great Friday.